the poorest and most abandoned. Pray for us, Comboni, to see the poorest and most abandoned. In love and in hatred, in life and in death, we follow your way of faith, hope and love. Pray for us, Comboni, to see Day 9 of the Novena to St. Daniel Comboni As we conclude our Novena to St. Daniel Comboni today, we look back at the 189 years ago, Africa or death. His dream came true through his relentless love and faith in Jesus Christ, whom he so much desired to bring to Africa. The Acholi community sings, Daniel Comboni, You are our Father in faith. Intercede for us. Bring our prayers to our King Jesus. The Bari community sings, Komboni, you are a true prophet of Africa. Take a moment now and reflect on this question. Who is Daniel Komboni to you? The cross is my strength, you say this with love. Komboni, Komboni, we fall. And the Komboni for me is a, he's a spiritual father. He's a father and a, because he's a founder of the congregation to to which I belong, then this is the, how I relate to Komboni as a father, but also as a prophet, because he is one who, who chose in fact to, to give an alternative. Nobody knew that uh, something would happen in that dark continent uh, called, uh, as Africa was referred to, but then he, he himself was convinced that the hour of Africa had come and it, it was even a birthright for Africa to get to know Christ. Yes, uh, me as a person, really Komboni's life touched me in a way that um, he left his own country and uh, he kind of uh, felt part and partial of Africa. He gave his life for Africa and uh, his statement which is really a part of me is that Africa or death. So kind, uh, he really gave a lot for Africa and uh, sacrificed all that. Although those days things were really difficult because Africa and Europe were really kind of different uh, uh, worlds altogether, even though up to now, but things have kind of improved. But that time to come to Africa was a total sacrifice. If someone is really not uh, spiritual, someone is not of God, it will really be difficult for, for a person to go that level. So that sacrifice he kind of made uh, to, to uplift the, the lifestyles and then the, the spiritual life of Africa uh, is a kind of a touching mission for me. Kombon for me is an expression of God's love. Just in simple terms, the real expression of God's love. Looking at how he he came, the, you know, the, the context in which he came to, to Africa, when he, the Europeans, most of them, you know, they had thought of Africa as a negative place. Some thought we didn't have souls. And, and to go beyond that, uh, come to Africa. Remember, there were eight children. The seven died. He just remained alone of the father and the mother. They were from a poor family. And he leaves all that, their parents poor. He's only one boy. He comes to us. I just say, for me, he's an expression of God's love. Uh, Daniel Komboni, to me, is a great inspiration. When I look at the life of Daniel Komboni, he left his country, Italy. He left all the comfort and came to Africa, a country which has nothing. Basically, he had no experience of what Africa is. He came and he gave his life totally to Africa. To me, it's a great inspiration. And um, 
it has inspired me in such that when I'm given obedience to go to a place, even when I don't know the place, I'm never shaken. I have that trust that if Daniel Komboni, a white man, left the comfort of his country and came to Africa and died here, then who am I? It fills me with joy. So for me, it's a, a great inspiration. And I'm proud to be connected with him. Me as an individual, I see someone who is selfless, who, in spite of all the odds, you see, sometimes we have so many excuses ourselves. You say, ah, something, you should be doing something, but you don't do it, you bring, bring an excuse. But I see this man, he, with all the odds and what not, he, did it, he threw away all the excuses, including leaving his parents to come and the, the, execute uh, Christ's work here in Africa, where he, he things that were so uh, challenging, diseases, even the people and what not, the environment. So I noted that here if we have, we have so many challenges, one thing as a sub parish, I told you that there is a lot of mobility of people. You don't have permanent what what. So I said the, the man who will help us, the saint who will help us, is this one because he, he went through that. In fact, that's whenever when I'm, I'm I'm praying through him, that's what I remind him that hey, there are so many challenges I'm having. There are so many challenges the sub parish is having, but. Help us by uh, praying for, for us, the Holy Spirit, to guide us more so that we can also be through and maybe attain your, that level you reached of being a, 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 a holy and a saint. Kombona as a person, to me, to me, sincerely speaking, Komboni is a, first of all, was a very courageous man, and for that, he's like an icon. He's an icon, he's a role model to follow. Because when I meditate much about him, we may say many things, he's a prophet, he's a bishop, he's a father. But to me, he's a, a model we should always look at. Because if I imagine myself like these challenges, I encountered many. But see, what about Kombon? How did he manage here? So I look at him, like now they are sending me to Congo. I was in Karamoja, I was in Nebi, Nangar. The language, the people, I never knew I'm di from a different setup. I go to Karamoja where I was threatened some times ago. <laughs> but uh, those are other things. But just to come and become one of them and one with them, I think is a, a big challenge. These people, for us, we shall go maybe to Congo. Somebody knows a bit of English to teach us French. For him, coming nobody knows the italian but he puts an effort and runs also the spiritual life of them the trust and the faith they had in the lord to me they are more is a model to look at and imitate yeah i think that when you sit back and think well you realize that maybe you did a little but um, um, you have that certainty that what you did, nobody else could have done. In the sense that the Lord wants you to be in that place. You and you for that moment, you were the person. If you were not there, maybe that work could, you know, was left because that you were appointed by him there. You know, there. So I, what, my duty was to respond to that assignment. And I tried, I must say I tried, although it is difficult to see the results, but they are there, I'm sure they are there. Yeah, the Daniel Comboni is to me a spiritual father. In a layman's language, call him a mentor. To me, he's a spiritual father. He's the person I look to uh, in order to orient myself as a priest and a missionary. So if there is anybody I look to, as far as my life today is concerned, it's Daniel Comboni. So um, he's a source of encouragement because 
I know what he went through. So when I'm going through things, I look back to how he persevered and how he went through what he went through. And uh, he's a source of inspiration because that motto of his, or that slogan, you may call it slogan, that save Africa by Africans, to me it's really a meaningful, uh, a meaningful statement. Uh, it's a source of inspiration. For me, as a missionary, but also I see it as meaningful for the continent, Africa. Uh, but if this continent is to become better, we Africans have to be very, very much involved and we have to be the first protagonists in making our place or our continent better. To me, Daniel Komboni is a is, uh, is uh, the, 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 the one who has brought the faith. Because without a company, we would have not been eh, having a faith like this. And uh, he has made a great contribution to me as a person. Mm? As a person. That's why we treasure him. And he is a brother to the one who has founded me. Hmm? The one who has founded me, Bishop Angelo Negro. So I look at him as he, also my father. Because uh, they are brothers. And uh, I am his niece. So he is not very far. Uh, like uh, seeing him like any other person. No, that is uh, the closeness I have with him. When I look at him, I, I see, yes, this is also my founder. Kumbuni was a, a young man who really understood the need of the church in Africa. And he understood that we have to save Africa with Africans. His dream was to come to the source of the Nile and to start university technical schools to help people from Uganda, from Africa, to get their own priests, their own leaders. And uh, he really gave his life for the missions. He died in Khartoum, very young, and uh, he really gave up his life for the Africans. So he had a real passion and he didn't care about the sufferings and the, the sickness he could undergo in order to help people to get the good news and to get uh, to receive the sacraments and to receive the Eucharist. You see, it is not about personal feeling because coming becoming a religious meaning that you want to serve people the role that you are given is given in accord in accordance to the service in accordance to the need of the people to serve people which means if they see that i'm capable of helping in this particular area i will be sent there and i will gladly take it uh, looking at the company uh, slogan save Africa with Africa, it means a lot to us, then a lot to me as an individual. Why? To save Africa with Africa, that time, most Europeans who came to Africa, they were dying. Now, Kumboni himself said, okay, if they are dying, we need Africans who will carry on. So Kumboni started training people start training Africans so that they are able to train other Africans. So that's where the origin of brotherhood came in. So they were lay people trained to help train others so that they're able to capture wide area of Africa because they had gotten used to the environment as Africans. The holiness of this man or this missionary a pioneer of Africa. It appears clearly that he was a man of God. You could not 
have fought so many difficult, so many trials. They have been never, never discouraged. A human being alone cannot tolerate, cannot support all these kind of trials. But Kumbuni was really good, for really holy men. God was with him. And this is a devotion to the cross, to the Sacred Heart, to our Mother Mary, was very, very, very great. And for us, we Komboni, missionary, we have a great heritage. Uh, we are encouraging our communities to prepare themselves in prayer and uh, to uh, to meet or to come together in small <laughs> small groups as can be uh, permitted by the situation that we are going through and uh, to uh, to be renewed in the spirit of our founder Daniel Komboni. I think that's how that's the best we can do as far as celebrating this year is concerned. But we are not losing hope. Uh, we know that uh, what we are going through will come to end or we will go through it. And uh, I do believe that we still have a, a future ahead of us as, uh, as missionaries and uh, as communities and as a country. Well, according to me, it is a mass that we celebrate the day of our founder, St. Daniel Comboni. We say, in fact, he, when we celebrate this day, we are celebrating the foundation on which we stand. It, he, he is a founder, but then he gave us a foundation. According to me, it is a living foundation. He gave us roots. So those we, we want to celebrate and then share, uh, share with the others. It is, in a way, a kind of animation. We animate the community in which we are to know that we are Kombon missionaries. And that is why uh, this time, with the permission maybe we shall receive from the, the RRDC that we can gather with the representatives of other communities, of course religious communities, but then the wish is that also some parishioners can take place in order to share with us, we share with them uh, what really motivates us, because behind all what we are doing is St. Daniel Comboni. And uh, uh, making him known by celebrating him means that we want also to share the charism so that many more could, could even be at attracted to come and, uh, and join us. And that is why we say, uh, to, in order to make that dream of Comboni or the conviction of Comboni still a reality, when he said, I am dying, but my work will not die. So when we celebrate his day, it would mean we want that his work becomes uh, relevant to the people with whom we work so that we may attract especially uh, young people so to get more vocations those who will now look into the future with the same charism of Comboni. Yeah, if I am given uh, a second chance to choose I would consciously choose to be a Comboni missionary and in fact this is what I uh, choose every day because uh, I am convinced that uh, I, I got a good landing in this Comboni family and uh, I have been given roots of a Comboni and if I am uprooted from here I would dry somewhere. It would be like a fish taken from water. If it is not to be eaten then it would be just to die. In any case I, I am at home with the Comboni missionaries and uh, I feel if I am to choose, I will continue choosing. And uh, this helps me. Why? Uh, because I understand the, the myself, even the way I am, that I, I, I have a threefold identity. First of all, I am a religious, which means consecrated with all the vows that the religious live, and I'm very proud of that. And then another. Uh, the second aspect is that I am a priest. I'm a priest and, uh, ready to collaborate and give my contribution also to serve as a minister of the church in the priesthood, but then I'm a missionary. That I to say that uh, taking the into consideration the experience I have got also in my past, also in my missionary work in the German speaking province in Germany, Austria and Northern Italy, I would say 
that uh, this uh, is not only a privilege but uh, it is God attracting me always to go and encounter him with, among different people and this of course I don't say that a diocesan priest or another congregation wouldn't offer such opportunity but this I have seen, I have tasted, I have experienced and I am at home. Let us also remember all the fallen missionaries who have gone unnoticed through the hardships of their work to serve Jesus Christ, following the footsteps of their forefather Daniel Comboni. Those who have died in war due to their poverty, hunger, disease and harsh weather. Eternal rest grant to them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. Saint Daniel Comboni, intercede for us. I feel at home with my brother and sisters. I know uh, we have different charisms, you know, each congregation has its own charism, and uh, we, we are all working for the kingdom of God, basically. Even if it was to extend God's love through service, I would still believe that each congregation is doing it in a different way. And I'm happy the way uh, combined missionaries will go about expressing this love, especially to the poor and most abandoned. Uh, I wouldn't join another congregation. If somebody said, maybe, what about if you serve now, you go and marry, I would say no. I know in marriage still you express love, you know, like in that way, but I would, uh, I would, I would say no. I am happy to be a combined missionary, and I, my desire, my desire is to die as a combined missionary. This is my strength. You say this with love.